with a bubbly batch of balmy buffoonery. Yes, a bulging bag of brilliant, brain-busting, bright, breezy, beaming, bushy-tailed banter. A bottomless ucket of bloody... Uh, 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 doc, Doc, what stop, quick. Content? You said bottomless ucket. It's bottomless ucket? Yeah, you meant to say bottomless bucket, but you said ucket. He said ucket instead of bucket? Definitely. Hmm. Is there such a word as ucket? No. Ah, dash. Well, you know what this means. What? One of May bees has escaped. Vincent, see if you can catch it. There it is. Ah, after it, Vincent, my old son. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, oh, can I tell a joke before I go? Oh, dear. Well, I suppose there's a first time for everything, I suppose. Yeah, all right. Well, uh, what's yellow and black and goes bzzz? They don't know. What is yellow and black and goes bzzz? A traffic warden having a shave. <laughs> Thank you, Vincent. Now then, what's small and grey and goes... Ah, no, stop it, help! I don't know. What is small and grey and goes... Ah, no, stop it, help! Come on, no, stop it, help! Now, go and catch that bee, ah. Vincent. Well, I watch the fast strip. Bucket. Bucket. Yes, it's definitely gone. Maybe I'm sitting on it. The Oddball Family, with Nancy's Nose. So you see, Nancy, that nuclear-powered spaceship could explode at any moment. Yes, and your nose is our only hope. OK, Nancy, up to you, old girl. Go, Nose! Nancy's Nose is locked onto the spaceship. Whee! Thanks, Nancy. You saved our lives. Now all I have to do is retract me nose and... Ah, I forgot! The nuclear-powered spaceship was still attached! <laughs> Next week on The Odd Bod Family, it's an atomic comic strip with Nuclear Nancy, the radioactive rascal. Careful she doesn't fall out with you kids. Transformer bots, bottoms in disguise. The Transformer bots, bottoms in disguise, making the world safe for rear end. Help! This bully has stolen my French fries, and now he's going to boot my bottom. Do not fear, weedy one. I, Bottotron, have come to save your bottom. That squashed his evil intentions. You squashed my fries as well. <laughs> oh no, it's my father, Daddy Bot. Listen, I warned you before not to interfere in the affairs of humans, you idiot. You made this weedy kid miserable. I'm not a weedy kid. Shut up. You must be punished. Oh no, he's turning into the one thing every Transformer bot fears. Help! Oh, ow! Oh, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you didn't like it one little bit, then come round here and we'll have a talk about it. Uh, man to croc. Comprende? Righty ho. Well, we've got a packed show for you tonight. Uh, we've. Uh, mm, yes, uh, we've got uh, some of the best smells from all over the world competing for a big prize. Yes, that's the Eurovision Pong Contest. And. Uh, Yes, uh, there will be the usual strips, and Vincent will be along later with his joke page. But there will be comedy as well, and helping us out on the artistic side, Luchetti Broschetti. <laughs> right, now then, what have you got there, Lou? Ah, Doco, this is a piece of a master. Oh, a masterpiece. That's right. It's better than Da Vinci. It's better than Michelangelo. It's better than Bellini. Better than Botticelli. Better than Lena Zaffaroni. Better yes, than... Yes, yes, all right. Just show us the painting. <laughs> oh, and uh, what do you call it? The Fona Lisa. Yes, well, I think your work's getting on top of you, Lou. What do you mean? This. Oh. Well, it's music time now, and this week we've got... <laughs> Sorry about that, I do apologise. Well, it's music time now, and this week, on our rubbishy rock spot at top of the slops, we've got the one and only Rick Estray.
was the worst song I've heard since Rolf Harris's last record was released. Oh, it wasn't released. It escaped. It's awfully good, that Rick Ashtray. When's you going to start his song? It's finished. Is he really? I thought it was English. You know, sometimes I think I've lost control of this program. I need some help, even if it's only from you. Right into the address we'll show you at the end of the program. Doc Croc's Nursery Spot presents Masters and Misses. Mrs. Motorist is peeved. Her car has broken down. She's fixed the puncture, but is too tired to work the foot pump. She's called out for someone to help her blow it up. It's Master Dynamite. Oh, dear. Next week, Mrs. Argument goes for a boat ride with Master Angry, and they fall out over the rapids. Oh, uh, right. And uh, now the moment you have all been waiting for... Le oh, Vincent. Vincent. It's, it's landed on my head. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't move. Um, Vincent, my old son, what are you going to do? I'm going to smash it over the head with this baseball bat. Well, that could be very painful, Vincent. No, it's all right. I'm wearing gloves. Ah, what if you miss the bee? Oh, go and get some fly spray. You'd better get this right, Vincent, because if you miss... Oh, no! Oh, no! The blow to the head has sent him loony! Oh, Vincent, my old fruitcake, get out of my filing cabinet and let's get on with the next bowl of fruit salad! Oh, <laughs> Round the Bend presents Spambo 3, The Mission. I saw the compound on the horizon. I knew the little guy was being healthy, and I was going to let him up. But first, I had to get past the guys guarding the checkpoint in the entrance. Thanks to my training in NAM, I knew all about infiltration. I waited till the guards were checking the vehicle entering the compound. I took the chance to sneak around the back and get to work with my wire clippers. But a guard spotted me. So no more Mr. Nice Guy. I blew the fence apart with my bazooka. I was in and running, and then I spotted my targets. I grabbed the rifle and took out two of them, and some of the rest with hand grenades and rapid fire. Yeah, the creeper was holding the little guy had no choice. He had to surrender and hand them over. He begged me to take the teddy bear and leave his stall alone, but I blew him away. I said the code word that I knew would make my little buddy happy. Who's the daddy's little baby? Coming soon, Spambo travels to the Far East to liberate two goldfish and a coconut from a traveling carnival near Newcastle. Hey, Vince, you really done it now. You make him a loopy. Me? It's nothing to do with me. He's mad, more than mad. He's mad, mad, mad. He's gone crazy. He's a crazy, crazy, crazy. He's a more than gaga. He's gaga, 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 gaga. He's a more than loco. He's a locomotive pulling a big, long You're train. the one who's talking rubbish. Dog's not mad. He's just happy. Look, he's singing. Oh, he's dancing. <laughs> he's not mad. He's happy. I still say he's mad. I think Lubrush is a great artist. Golly, you're right. He is mad. We interrupt this program to bring you an important interruption. Doc Croc, the famous proprietor of Round the Bend, has gone completely round the bend. Here is an artist's impression. Oh, a little splash of blue up here, a little bit of yellow down there. Oh. That was an artist's impression of Rolf Harris, and now back to the newsflash. Doc Croc has been hit over the head by Vince in order to get rid of a very annoying bee. Like the one in plumbing. That's a really annoying one. Fancy spelling something P-L-U-M-B-I-N-G and pronouncing it plumbing. That's really dumb. And now back to Doc. <laughs> right, well, thank you for that news, potatoes, John Round. And now on the bend the rounders, we have more of the viewers' rivers which have flooded in through the letterbox next week. Uh, but thirdly, our Prime Minister. <laughs> the strange tales of Psycho the Magnificent. Oi, you can't park here. That's a double yellow line. What are you saying? Don't you know who I am? I am Psycho the Magnificent Magician. Oh, yeah. Prove it. <laughs> Allow me to take your hat. Uh, uh, just a minute. Now, I have never seen this hat, have I? I have never, ever seen this hat before in my life. But from this hat, I can conjure six of dynamite. So, uh, oh, I'll have my hat back if you don't mind. Certainly. Oh, dear. I must have left one behind. Oh, uh -huh. Uh, I'm giving you a ticket. I want your name. Very well. Oh, there it is. Hmm, <coughs> the 
here, me, it seems you could do with a wash and brush up and a change of clothing. First, the wash. <laughs> now the brush up. <laughs> and finally, the change of clothing. Get these things off me. Well, did you say out there? No, no, change me back to the way I was. <laughs> Oh dear, someone must have phoned the police. I'll take your advice and move my car. <laughs> oh, where did I put my keys? Where are the keys? Oh, they must be here somewhere. I've got a mirror like a safe. Next week, more motoring mischief as Psycho finds himself parked in prison and gives the governor a breakdown. False teeth from beyond the stars, a unidental production. The planet Earth has been devastated by an army of false teeth. I know it sounds silly, but let's face it, if we're asked if we can make it to number one, then anything is possible. Once magnificent monuments are now derelict ruins. The Great Wall of China, the Taj Mahal, Birmingham City Center. Ah, hang on, Birmingham City Center has always looked like this. It seems nothing can stop the teeth. The army has tried everything it knows. Mindless violence, mindless violence, and more mindless violence. Only one man has a hope of saving the world. Roger Prentice, the apprentice dentist. Although, to be honest, this is now episode five, and he's, he's still getting nowhere fast. Look, you stick to doing the announcements, and I'll stick to saving the world. <clears throat> He is ably assisted by Lily O'Lovely, his beautiful assistant, who, in my opinion, should have a much bigger part in this serial. Why, thank you. Thank you. Right, that's it. You're fired. Who, me? Yes, you. Oh. Lily, we must talk to Colonel Handelbaum and Stout. Roger, Roger. Colonel, the enemy are always one step ahead. It is my belief we have a spy in our midst. A spy? But who? I don't know. I, I just have a hunch. Well, uh, when you can't see it, you must have a very good tailor. Silence. I am Head Teeth, your new leader, you foolish earthlings. <laughs> Head Teeth, tell us, what are your aims? My aims? My aims? Well, in the long term, my aims are to be incredibly evil, to talk in this silly, croaky way, and cackle at the end of each sentence. <laughs> oh, and to meet Michael Jackson. Now, look outside. You are surrounded. There is no escape. <laughs> cackle. Oh, no. There's only one thing we can do now. What's that? Panic. Ah! Hmm. Well, as I've been fired, I am not going to say. Will Roger Prentice, apprentice dentist, overcome the menace of the false teeth? Find out in next week's gripping episode of False Teeth from Beyond the Stars. So there. Oh, flippity dip dip dee, walnuts, bananas. And now it's time for Gary the Goldfish Juke Page. Q Gerald. Gary, where are you? Oh, 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 oh. Where's the fish got to? Ah, there he is, little devil. I'm not oh. a goldfish. I'm a rat. You know, a smelly, furry thing with whiskers and a long tail. Yes, gerbils. Of course you are. Of course you are. Ah, now, just get over there. Get, a, no, get those pectoral fins flapping and get over to that set, you slimy scaled Philistine. Um, blah, 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 blah. Now, what do you call a cat with eight legs? An octopussy. <laughs> What's the most expensive fish in the world? Goldfish. <laughs> Where do eggs go to the lavatory? Igloos. <laughs> what sort of car goes cheap, cheap, cheap? A budgery car. <laughs> yes, thank you, Arnold the Grape. And now over to our pool opinion. Rubbish. <laughs> it's chaos down there and all because of a bee. Oh, mind you. These things can be very nasty. I was once stung in a very nasty place. Where? Birmingham. In Australia, we have huge bees. They're so big they can kill a grown man. Uh, with a sting? No, with a karate chop. Chop? Does someone mention shopping? We're talking about bees. Have you ever been stung by a bee? A pea? No, I've never been stung by a pea. In fact, you know something? I didn't even realise they could sting. We'd better watch out if there's a bee about. Do you know what to do if you get stung by a bee? No, what? You go, Ah, I've just been stung by a bee! Hello, viewers. Hello? Oh, hello. Uh, David Colmore here, and it's over to Wembley to report on today's big soccer match. And what a glorious day and result it's been for England there. The, uh, the weather could only have been described as perfect, and so could the final score. As you can see, England won, Scotland nil. Oh, and yes, I think we should be able to have a word with some of the key players in the England dressing room. 
Oh, well, it's, 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 it's all very quiet in here. The, the lads are obviously shattered after today's brilliant performance. Uh, oh, oh, hello, uh, there's Brian Robson. Let's see what he has to say about the win. Uh, Brian, if I may call you Brian, how did you see today's game? Um, well, well, yeah, well, he's lost for words too, and uh, indeed, who can blame him? Oh, oh, I, I see the lads are watching the game again there on the TV. Uh, one piece of good news is that everyone got through the game without injury. <laughs> Round the Bend True Romance presents The Fruits of Love. Oh, Sharon, you're so lucky. Fancy getting fixed up with that dishy Simon Smead. Oh, no, it's great, isn't it? We're going out on a date tonight. <sighs> Stone me a date. Cosmic Comprehensive, the Intergalactic Academy. Well, here we are, 5,863 light years from home. That didn't take too long. <laughs> right, everybody, get changed. <clears throat> you all know how much I want our school to win this competition, but it's going to be tough. So get out there and grit your teeth. Yes, sir. Yeah, the things we do for our school. <sighs> Where are our entrants to the egg and spoon race? It's about to begin. Coming, sir. Sure. Sorry, uh, we're late. We got healed up with the gate. <laughs> Easy beginnings. Right now, on your marks, get set, go! And they're off! Oh, they are, aren't they? Oh, <laughs> oh mister, just those two in front to beat. Pant, Pant, I've got an idea. Yeah? Have a knuckle sandwich, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why, one? Oh, no, you've not. You've been disqualified for causing trouble, especially you, Spoon, for stirring it. Cheat! I've a good mind to crack you both. They wouldn't bother, Glamly. We'll only end up with egg on our faces. Mm. Oh, no, you can't possibly go up the Eiffel Tower. I'm washing it, and it's good to dread. <coughs> what here. we need to do is bang him on the head with a baseball bat again. That might knock him back to normality. <laughs> it's a good idea. I think it's very dangerous. It might make him even worse. I refuse to let you hit him with the baseball bat. A baseball bat is barbaric and brutal. Hey, a lot of bees in this week's program. <laughs> well, what do you suggest, Jemima? Well, I suggest something more scientific, something more medical. Look, I've got these books out of the library, right? Concussion, Prevention and Cure by Professor Cyrus Headbanger. The do's and don'ts of insanity. Oh, there must be something useful in all this lot. I think you're right, Jemima. The medical approach would be better. <laughs> Vincent Mayo's son, how dare you hit me? Yippee, he's back to normal. Will you desist this? Good. Great. What is going on? Everybody's gone completely crazy. Oh, it's great to have you back, Doc Croc. Have me back, Doc Croc? What are you talking about, you rampant reporter? I haven't been anywhere. You've all gone barmy. Get off me. Go on, get away. Shoot, shoot. Oh, he's gone. 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 Oh, he's gone.